Good morning. Today we are going to investigate projectile motion by using this simulation. The first thing I want to show you are the forces acting on the projectile as it's moving. There is only one force that we will assume is acting on the projectile, and that's gravity. For now, we will assume that there is no air resistance. Before we continue with the simulation, I want you to notice a few things. In the upper right hand corner, notice I have broken up the motion into an X and a Y direction. Why have we done this? Well, as you just saw, we're assuming there's no drag. So we're assuming there's no forces in the X direction. And the only other force is gravity, and that's acting along the Y direction. So that's why we're able to break up this problem into an X and a Y direction. There is a row of data that you'll notice that's related to the X direction. 228.1 meters refers to the distance the object has traveled from where it started. Also notice that 29.6 meters per second refers to the current velocity in the X direction. And now I really want you to pay attention to that specific number, and only that specific number when we launch the projectile again. So we won't change any parameters, and I just want you to focus on current velocity in the X direction. Let's see. Notice that the current velocity in the X direction does not change throughout the journey. Let's change the angle and see if that holds true. At a different angle, Notice the current velocity in the X direction has changed, but throughout the journey it remains constant. This time the current velocity in the X direction was only 17.2 meters per second and that number did not change. So I want you to keep that in mind. Now let's pay attention to the Y direction. This row of information gives us some details about the Y direction. It tells us the maximum height of the object. In addition, it also tells us the current velocity in the y direction. Now, based on this diagram, this represents the velocity just before the impact. It's negative because the negative means that the object was moving down. So, just before impact, the object was moving downwards. Let's focus on current velocity in the y direction. Notice it's positive while it's going upwards and negative while it's going downwards. Let's focus in on current velocity in the y direction when the object hits peak height. Right around now. Notice that the current velocity at peak height in the y direction was zero. This will be easier to see if we use a greater angle. Right around now. And paying attention to current velocity in the x direction, notice that again, x direction velocity does not change. And at peak height, the y velocity is zero. Keep this in mind today. So in summary, before we continue, throughout the journey, velocity x remains constant. And at maximum height, velocity y is zero. The forces acting on a baseball or a cannonball or any projectile as it's in flight are gravity, air resistance, and possibly lift. However, for all of these problems, we will assume that the only force acting on the projectile is gravity. 
Hence, acceleration or changing velocities only takes place in the vertical direction, in the y direction. And the velocity in the horizontal direction, in the x direction, remains constant. When these assumptions are made, the motion that is modeled is parabolic in nature. Here's our first problem. A cannonball is fired from the top of a cliff. The initial speed of the ball is 72 km an hour. Find the distance the cannonball will land from the base of the cliff. And calculate the speed of the cannonball 2500 milliseconds after launch. So this is the picture we sort of have. We have a cliff, 50 meters tall, we have a cannon at the top of it, and we're launching a projectile in the manner you see, at 72 kilometers an hour. And so the question is, what's the distance? We're going to break this up into an X and a Y problem. Now for the X direction, we know the speed is constant, 72 kilometers an hour. In meters per second, that's 20 meters per second. We divide by 3.6. Because the velocity in the x direction does not change, we could use this formula. Speed equals distance over time. Substituting, we know that our speed is 20 meters per second. But the problem is, we don't know the distance and we don't know the time. So often in projectile motion questions, we need to use both directions to solve a problem. In the y direction, we know that the cannonball is going to drop 50 meters. So its displacement is 50 meters down. We also know the acceleration. It's 9.8 meters per second per second. That's down. We also know that our initial velocity in the y direction is zero. How do we know that? If we pay very careful attention to our initial velocity, notice that the vector is pointing along the x direction. That 72 kilometers an hour, that 20 meters per second, is pointing in the x direction only. It's not pointing upwards, it's not pointing downwards, it's pointing only in the x direction. It lines up perfectly with the x direction. So this is the reason why the initial velocity in the y direction is zero. If the cannonball was aimed upwards or downwards, this wouldn't be the case. It's only because the cannonball is aimed along the x direction. Here is our displacement formula. Please now pause the video and try to solve for time. I hope you've tried this, substituting our displacement and our acceleration. Continuing on with the math, multiplying half and 9.8, dividing by 4.9, we end up with this answer for time squared, and here is our time. This is telling us that the projectile is in the air for 3.194 seconds before hitting the ground. So from when it's launched to when it hits the ground, that's the time it takes. For this to happen. Now going back to our x direction, we are going to take 3.194 seconds and substitute it in for time. There's a substitution and working through the math we end up with this answer for distance. Significant digits, it's 60 meters. Why only one significant digit? while the 50 meters is written to one significant digit. The next part of the question was to calculate the speed of the cannonball 2500 milliseconds after launch. 2500 milliseconds is 2.5 seconds. And so a little later on we'll say that the ball is approximately here, 2.5 seconds later. And we need to solve for the velocity or the speed ultimately. And so we draw our vector and we break that vector apart into an x and a y component. Now, one of the parts of the drawing, one of those vectors we've drawn, we actually already know. So I want you to really give this some thought. Which vector 
Which factor do we already know? Pause the video now, think about it. All right, I hope you gave it some thought. We know the X component. Why is this? Remember, we said that along the X direction, there are no forces acting. And if there's no forces acting, that means the velocity in the X direction cannot change. So whatever velocity we start off with, in this case, it was 72 kilometers an hour or 20 meters per second. That velocity remains constant, regardless of whatever position the ball is at. It's always going to be 20 meters per second in the X direction. And so our goal, of course, is still to get V2, the final speed. To do this, we need to solve for the velocity in the Y direction. So focusing on the Y direction now, we know the time of flight is two and a half seconds. The acceleration is 9.8 meters per second per second. Remember that the initial velocity in the Y direction, what is it? Well, we look at that point and notice again, as already mentioned, at that specific point, all of the motion is in the X direction. It's not moving up or down when it's launched. And so the initial velocity in the Y direction is zero meters per second. Now I'd like you to use that information, pause the video, and solve for the final velocity. I hope you tried it. Here is the final velocity in the Y direction. And so substituting that number into our triangle, now at this point, I leave it to you to use Pythagorean theorem. Our final velocity works out to 31.6 meters per second or 30 meters per second when written to significant digits. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please watch part two of projectile motion to see another example of projectile motion. Have a great day, bye-bye.